Now, I want to move on at this point to a really important concept and distinction that was introduced in ROB2 and is new compared to ROB1. And that's to do with the effect of interest, the effect of intervention that is being estimated uh, or for which the risk of bias is being assessed. And here we are going to try something a little ambitious for a webinar, which is that we've got a question for you and we would like you to uh, suggest some answers in the chat. And we will try to uh, we will try to think about that live as we go along. So this may well go wrong. So here's here's a scenario for you all to consider. Investigators conducted a large randomized trial of screening for colorectal cancer. The design of the trial is that patients registered with family doctors were individually randomized to receive an invitation to attend for screening. Of those patients. 55% of the patients who were randomized to receive the intervention acted on the intervention and attended screening. All patients were followed up for colorectal cancer and they were followed up perfectly for 10 years after randomization using excellent electronic health records. So there was no loss to follow up and we perfectly ascertained which patients did and did not um, develop colorectal cancer throughout follow-up in each group. So our question for you to think about is what can we learn from this trial and who would be interested in what interested in the results? Who would be interested in what we can learn? Anybody going to volunteer a, an answer in the chat? I think are we going to have to use the questions box rather than the chat? Yes, in the question. Sorry, yes, in the questions box. Okay, so so uh, there, I can see. I'm not sure I'm seeing the whole thing. So I'm seeing something that says policymakers would be interested. Interested. Uh, we agree with that. And if a policymaker would be interested, they would probably be interested in comparing what happens when we roll out the intervention. So they would want to know all about the proportion of, inter of patients who will actually attend screening and uh, the effect comparing everybody invited to screening to everybody not invited to screening because they would be interested in the costs of ben costs and benefits of introducing the program. So we agree we agree with that. I don't think I'm seeing all the questions. I don't know if anybody well, else can see. There are a great deal. Although someone has responded, patients also would be interested. And someone says, patients too, is it worth my time attending? Right. Um, and that and that's a really good point. And 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 that's the subtle thing about this. I would argue that if I were if I were a patient who um, who was thinking about who had received an invitation to screening, what I would want to know about is the effect on me if I attend screening. Um, I don't really care about the average effect balancing out patients who receive an intervention who don't attend screening. And the effects on uh, and, and, the, and patients who receive the intervention and, and do attend screening. I want to know about the effect on me um, if I attend screening. And what we can say for the time being is that fairly obviously in this scenario, the intention to treat effect, um, the, the effect when I compare everybody invited to screening with everybody not invited to screening, will not necessarily be a good estimate of the effect on me if I attend screen. I hope that's relatively clear and thank you for your questions in the chat. Julian, do you see anything else, any other comment that we might make? Uh, well, yes, there's an interesting one. Um, what we can learn is that not what that what is intended is not always achieved, I think it says. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. Although, of course, um, when I send out the invitation, I don't even intend that everybody um, that everybody uh, invited will attend the screening because I know perfectly well that I'm dealing with human beings who have got different inclinations to be screened. 
So part of what I know about when I invite people to screening is that not everybody will invite, invited will attend. There's another interesting point about what is the outcome for those who didn't attend the screening. I think I might be prepared in this example to say that there is no direct effect on colorectal cancer mortality from simply failing to be achieved. Um, somebody said still no slides. Can everybody, I hope everybody can see the slides, but presumably you, Julian, can we, can we all see, still see the slides? Yeah, I think there's just one person having trouble. I don't know if Dario is able oh, I see. to okay, fine. anymore. Well, let's move on from that. Thank you. That, I, I feel that our, uh, our attempt to do things interactively was, was something of a success there. So thank you all very much. Okay, well, we faced, uh, my colleagues and I, uh, exactly this problem when we conducted a uh, prostate-specific antigen-based screening intervention for pro uh, and wanted to look at prostate cancer mortality. And, and this is a paper that was published in uh, JAMA in, I think, 2017. So this was a single PSA, prostate-specific antigen, it's a blood test, which tells you that you're, which can tell you that you're at elevated risk of prostate cancer, but doesn't tell you precisely. So if you have elevated PSA, uh, there is then invasive follow-up to uh, determine whether you have uh, prostate cancer. Now, this is the effect comparing uh, people in the control group in blue with people who attended for screening in green. Uh, we're look and we're looking at the cumulative risk of all-cause mortality. So all-cause mortality was dramatically lower in people who attended screening, in people who attended for screening, having been invited, compared to the controls who are people who were never invited. Now, we uh, did not interpret that as saying that prostate cancer screening dramatically reduces all mortality, I'm happy to say. Uh, so the rate ratio comparing people who attended for screening with control was 0 0.68, uh, with a small p-value and a narrow confidence interval, 32% lower mortality in people who attended for screening. However, all-cause mortality was dramatically higher in people were, who were invited for screening but did not attend. And this speaks to the question that somebody asked, we did not interpret that as meaning failure to attend screening directly kills me. The problem here is that whether or not I intend screening is going to be associated with all sorts of health behaviours that and uh, and and uh, attitude to uh, risk that and these things are associated with all cause mortality. So appropriately, we didn't report these in our paper. We, record, we reported cumulative, we reported an intention to treat analysis. We compared the cumulative risk of all cause mortality in people who were invited to screening with the cumulative risk of all cause mortality in, pe in people who were not invited to screening. And you can see that there was almost exactly identical mortality in the two groups. The intention to treat uh, rate ratio was 0 0.99. Being invited to prostate cancer mole screening did not change all-cause mortality. We appropriately did an intention to treat analysis. We'll come back a little later to what we might have done had we been interested or in the effect of being screened. All this goes to show that when uh, for, a, for a, an investigator reporting a trial or for a patient um, reading the results of a trial and thinking about health decisions, and when we're assessing the risk of bias, we could be interested in either or both of the effect of assignment to intervention. That's the one that's of most interest to a policymaker, considering whether to uh, implement, introduce a screening program, and that's the intention to treat effect and the standard analysis in the randomized trial. 
but we might be interested in the effect of adhering to intervention as specified in the trial protocol. As we discussed earlier on, that is the effect of most interest to a patient who is deciding whether to be screened. We might call that the per protocol effect. Now, a source of great confusion is that you will all be aware of the risks of conducting a per protocol analysis. So the slide I showed you where we compared all cause mortality in people who attended for screening with all cause mortality who, uh, who in people who were not invited to screening is an example of an inappropriate per protocol analysis. It, uh, reporting that would have would have been a big mistake. That that is just um, that is just biased. But the fact that we shouldn't do a standard naive per protocol analysis should not be confused with the fact that the per protocol effect may well be of interest. Nonetheless, in most Cochrane reviews, we are going to be assessing in the intention to treat effect. And in this seminar, we're going to focus mainly on bias in the intention to treat effect, because mainly trials report intention to treat analyses and review authors, those conducting risk and bias assessments, will be assessing the risk of bias in the intention to treat effect. Should we ask a quick poll to um, check people's understanding of that? Number two. So num poll number two, please. Julian, could you read out the question? Yeah, so the question is, which effect is a randomized trial better able to estimate? The effect of assignment to intervention or the effect of adhering to intervention? Okay, we've got over 70% voted now, still going up. Okay, that's about it, slowing down a bit. Oh, Julian, I'll let you uh, I'll let you comment on the results of this one. So, um, well, four fifths said the effect of assignment to intervention, and just under one fifth say the effect of adhering to intervention. I think we'd say um, the the better answer is the first one, because the the comparison of the groups as randomized is is the intention to treat effect, which is the estimate of the um, effective assignment or the ITT effect. So the randomized trials are directly set up to answer that question. And as we hopefully will say a bit about later, they can sometimes be used to answer the second one, but not usually with more difficulty. 